an exceed and, and heap overflow. Um, now, a lot of people got excited about this report, understandably, but there is a few things notable on this bug when it comes to exploitation. For one, uh, in the impact section, MoonBSD notes that it's a possible RCE, um, and above that actually states that um, actual exploitation will, will require a debugger, which I do not have. Um, basically, what I'm getting at there is it doesn't seem like this is confirmed to be exploitable, which actually made it a little bit surprising to me that Sony paid out 10, 10k here, um, but, I, but I digress. The other thing of note is this is ultimately an 800 to 1k byte overflow in the MBUF zone. Um, you're somewhat limited on how much you can overflow because the MTU is 1500, um, so you're, you can send like up to 3000 into a 2048 byte buffer. Um, the MBUF zone is kind of a special zone because only MBUFs and MBUF clusters get allocated there. You're never going to have general purpose allocations from like some syscall that's going to end up in the MBUF zone. So deriving primitives is not going to be straightforward. Um, you might have to try to manipulate the page allocator into giving you an adjacent page that's used for some other zone or like general purpose allocations. Uh, maybe you could do something with the headers of the MBUF clusters. I'm not totally sure. Um, but even then, uh, on the PS5, the mitigations are pretty strong. Um, the PS5 has KSLR, which, you know, PS4 does too, but it also has uh, supervisor mode access prevention, execution prevention, and it also has CFI in the kernel. So if there's any pointers that you would have to fake in the headers, which there will be, um, if you don't have an existing leak and a way to get memory you control into kernel memory, you're not really going to be able to fake those pointers. Um, so exploitation is going to be made a lot more difficult by that. Um, Speaking so, yeah. of the leaks, um, how much... Sorry, I, I... You know what? Never mind, actually. I've already thought through what my question was going to be. All right, all good. Um, so yeah, I doubt this could be full-chained on its own against the PS5, at least. I feel you'd, you'd need like an info leak uh, to be able to use this effectively. Um, on the PS4, this could possibly be used, but the thing is, this was patched in uh, the 9.03 firmware of the PS4, um, which I kind of showed in a, in a diff on Twitter, and I think this ultimately will be less stable than the existing XFAT exploit, so I don't think there's really much point um, in doing it on the PS4, except for, you know, just for something to do, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I'm a little skeptical on how useful this vulnerability will be. Um, but it's still, it's kind of a cool bug. It's not really an attack surface that I had considered. Uh, like I, I did, I never even really thought of PPPoE and thought to look there. So yeah, I mean, still a cool report. Um, I'll bring up the diff here for anybody that's watching that's interested. Um, so you can kind of see the the bug fix here as well. So basically what they did in PPPoE get mbuff, they check if the length is um, greater than hex 800. And if it is, they return a null. Um, they don't allocate an mbuff and you know that triggers a, a failure case. Um, so yeah, very straightforward patch. Um, and you, that's in 9.03 uh, on the PS4. So yeah, um, bit of a, a weird bug and one that I think would be tricky to exploit. Uh, and even if you did manage to exploit it, I think the stability would be questionable. But, you know, maybe it's worth looking into just for the PS5 aspect of it. But like I said, I think you're probably going to need an info lead to chain with. Um, nonetheless, you know, that got reported to Sony and yielded a 10k bounty. So pretty good for MoonBSD still. Yeah, and I mean, you might still need an info leak, but that is kind of par for the course with a lot of exploits so might not have one now but well if, if there was an info leak um i imagine this could still be used over on the ps5 like it would still be a reasonable thing to use potentially yeah um the the thing that's like a little bit worrying there is just the fact that you're stuck in the mbuff zone a little bit um and i don't know on the ps5 if you're able to to manipulate the page allocator into giving you an adjacent page for like a different zone um, because the way memory allocation works in FreeBSD is super interesting. Uh, it's basically like pegged to the core a little bit. Um, so like one core won't be able to allocate from the same set of pages as like another core. Um, so it's, it's a little bit weird with how the memory allocation works there. Yeah. I don't want to say that it, it's impossible to exploit, but it wouldn't be trivial. Um, even if you had like an info leak or something. So 
Okay, fair enough. I was just thinking that, you know, if, if Leap was the only thing kind of standing in the way, then that seems pretty reasonable that eventually an info leak will be found. Yeah. One thing that we've seen from, like, the vulnerabilities that have been published that affect the PS5, um, like XFAT, for example, too, is mitigations go a long way into, uh, you know, making exploitation difficult or maybe impossible for certain bugs, um, or at least requiring an additional bug on top of it. Because, yeah, on PS4, I think this would potentially be exploitable on its own, but when you have CFI and SMAP especially, SMAP and SMAP are big, um, yeah, it, it just it narrows your exploit conditions pretty significantly, um, and that's does being the, demonstrated pretty well by the PS5. Does the PS5 have XOM? It does, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I mean, that makes hunting a little bit harder, because even if you have a leak, you can't, like, dump the kernel to get all the code and hunt for other bugs. Yeah, um, it's not super relevant for this vulnerability no, specifically, no. but yeah, the, the PS5 does have um, read-only memory in, or sorry, execute-only memory. Uh, in both user land and kernel. So, you know, even if you were able to pop the kernel and get code execution there, you couldn't dump kernel. Uh, and like you were saying, yeah, that significantly limits your ability to perform vuln research uh, yeah. to try to find better bugs to work with. Kind of thought for a while, like XOM's a really interesting mitigation. Um, but like you're kind of saying, like it doesn't stop a lot of exploits, but it is a mitigation. It, it is almost like the. Um, Security through obscurity, in a sense. It's just making it harder to actually get that code to do further research or to do, like, more more effective research, uh, rather than actually mitigating the exploits itself. So, I don't know, it came to mind while we were talking about the PS5. It's, it's, one, it's one of the few cases where I think of XOM actually being a pretty useful mitigation. Yeah, because in a lot of circumstances, you can dump the code pretty easily um it only really works in like this really locked down environment um like a console um but yeah in that specific circumstance it's it's very effective uh, another area it could be very effective is like iot uh, if you have some iot device that you don't want people to be able to dump the firmware and, and try to mess with you can use read only or uh, <laughs> execute only memory there don't know why i keep saying read only because yeah, that's read the only opposite. is not yeah <laughs> yeah um but yeah, like you said, in the PS5, it's pretty effective. Um, the other thing is, you because there's a hypervisor in play, you can't patch the kernel, um, the PS5 kernel, if you have kernel code execution either. So basically, what I'm getting at here is, even if you do manage to exploit the PS5, your post-exploitation scenario is really brutal. Um, so yeah, it, it's a good, it's a console that demonstrates pretty well how effective mitigations can be. Um, although you know, we already kind of knew that Apple kind of. Uh, demonstrated that well with iOS and stuff too, um, which the PlayStation security model is kind of emulating a little bit. Um, they're kind of going the Apple route and saying, okay, well, we can't kill all the bugs. We'll kill the way that ways to exploit those bugs. But yeah, um, still, it's always cool to see like new reports that come out for, um, you know, consoles uh, being able to take advantage of, or being able to exploit lockdown environments like that is very enticing. Um, but yeah, this bug, Hard to say, really, if it'll be useful. Um, there's probably other bugs that you could try to look for that will yield much better primitives and have better stability. So, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll see how it goes with that one. Um, not much more to say there, though. Uh, just have to see how it plays out. So, yeah. Uh, unless you have any final thoughts on this topic, Z, or any of the other ones, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Nope. And uh, no shout-outs this week. <laughs> 